If like me, you record videos for YouTube or online courses, you may be wondering, which is the best way to do this? Should you be recording in your camera or should you be going straight into your computer? Well, honestly, I've been surprised at the results that we've just seen today and uh, I know which way I'm gonna be going forward after this. So let's consider the options. If you record it straight onto an SD card in your camera, Surely that's the best thing, right? The quality is going to be better, isn't it? And out of interest, we're using the Sony ZV-E10 here and everything is set to 4K. And I'm recording this whole video simultaneously onto the camera and then directly onto my Mac computer using both Ecamm Live and ScreenFlow. If you don't know of those and you're interested come the end, we've put links in the descriptions for trials of them. So we'll take a look in a minute and see quite what the differences are on here. But I just want to point out, firstly, as I mentioned, we are doing this in 4K and we're starting to record all of our videos in 4K. So the quality should be high and it should be consistent across all three of these. And we've got a relatively unique challenge of having this very dark wall behind us with a slight gradient on it where the lights are coming down. And I know that's an issue for us that might not be so challenging for you if you've got a busier or lighter background going on behind you than just this solid color. And before we compare the image quality, just making you wait a little bit longer, I wanna talk about the convenience as well. It isn't only image quality that we need to look at here. If you're recording camera, you you're gonna have to keep formatting those cards and deleting the files off them so you don't run out of space. Definitely don't want that to happen halfway through a recording. You may need to just confirm that your camera doesn't have this 30 minute recording limit, which was standard in the past, or at least be conscious of it. Maybe your videos won't go over 30 minutes, but if they do, you need to make sure that your camera hasn't just cut out on you. Then you've got to manage to reach over to your camera to start and stop the recording. And once you've finished it, you've got to take the card out, plug it into a card reader, bring it into your computer to edit it, it's a lot of hassle. Alternatively, if you use something like Ecamm or ScreenFlow, then the recording's already on your computer. So that extra hassle needs to be worthwhile. Plus, in my case, I'm using a USB microphone here, meaning that I need to record this into my computer anyway, and then sync it up with that footage that's coming from the camera. But maybe you're recording the audio straight into your camera, so this wouldn't be an issue to you anyway. Plus, recording into your computer then is going to do away with that 30 minute record limit that many cameras have got. It'll be less likely to overheat and you haven't got to do all this hassle of moving files around on cards. Obviously this is all only an option if we're able to sit in front of a desk and work with cameras plugged into computers anyway. If you're out on location you're just going to record straight into your camera but I'm guessing you're probably doing the same sort of thing as me and just wanting to be able to set up like this. So enough teasing why don't we compare that footage? First, this is the recording that went straight into Ecamm. And then this is the footage that's going into ScreenFlow. And this is what's come off of the memory card from the camera. Now I did just double check that there are no filters that I've added in Ecamm because you can see a difference here, can't you? Ecamm seems to increase the contrast or lower that exposure. Blacks on my t-shirt here seem to be blacker. And actually I've got more color in my face. It's actually warmed it up, if anything. I think that looks quite nice. Then in ScreenFlow, I'm not liking what it's doing to me as much over there. It's kind of given me this pinky cast to my face and it seems to be more grainy or noisy like it's just a lower quality file. I'm not really liking it. And in the camera footage then, I feel like this is a, a flatter image. My black t-shirt looks more grey and my face doesn't seem to have so much colour in it. It's like we've applied a profile to this like we do sometimes to actually flatten this down so that we can pull it back in afterwards in editing. But it's the same footage that's coming out of the camera into the computer. And that isn't bad to have that. Owen mentioned earlier, he'd much rather work with that. And then he can lift up the blacks and he can adjust the saturation afterwards easier this way than it is to have it and be pulling it back. So we're not complaining about it. They just seem to be different. Where I am more concerned is in this top left corner over here where we've got this subtle gradient with the light on this solid dark wall, as I said. This is the camera footage still at the minute and you won't really see an issue in this, but if we switch this now over to the screen flow footage, can you can see how this is kind of pixelated on those edges? And sadly, even in Ecamm, it isn't able to match what comes in in the camera footage. The computer footage doesn't seem to have enough range of colors to make this smooth contrast between the dark to the slightly lighter blue. And honestly, this was a shock to me. Owen, who oversees all of our editing, has been saying to me for a while that he wants to be recording in camera. But I've been reluctant because it's so much easier just to record here in Ecamm. But 
I'm afraid not anymore. Fair enough for a live stream or where it's not so much of an issue, but we're investing in this and we want high quality videos to be going out. And so that little bit of inconvenience to be able to record in camera and pull that across it is going to be worth it for us. As I said at the start, we've got a dark solid colored wall that causes these challenges. So this might not even be an issue to you, but do please check it out. And this may not be as noticeable in 1080p as it is in 4K, but again, we're increasing the quality and standard of our videos. So we're recording in 4K and this is what we need to work with. Now I want you to have a try at this and uh, see the difference yourself. Let's continue the conversation. I'd love to hear back from you. Firstly, what you thought to this. Can you really see the difference that I'm talking about over here? And if you have a go at this yourself, why don't you test it out and let us know how you get on? Is that extra hassle worth the extra quality? That's up to you. I found this really interesting and quite eye-opening to be honest. It certainly changed my mind as to how we're going to record going forward. As ever, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. Do please give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and please subscribe so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Bye for now.